Welcome, Haunters, to Conjuring House. You all know it, you all love it. It was in the movie The Conjuring, where the Warrens went to help the Barrett family with the demon or the ghost, or whatever was in there. They were helping them. And it's up north. It's in Rhode Island. Some place I can't pronounce. Burrowville. My mouth doesn't do that. I see it on a... Oh, dude. I don't want to live there. It's cold. It's, it rains. It snows. And it's creepy. It's old and it's spooky. And it became, after the movie, a paranormal tourism hotspot. Now, it's in collapse. There's all sorts of drama. Let's talk about it in just a sec. Welcome back, Haunters. So, first of all, as always, I just want to thank all my subscribers. Thank you very much. Thank you for anyone who takes the time to watch my video. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Those of you that aren't subscribed, please take a moment, consider subscribing. I can use all the help I could get. Thank you so much. Like, share, comment, everyone. Give me your thoughts about the video. Help me improve. With that being said, without further delay, let's get into the content of today's video. All right, The Conjuring House. Just like probably everyone else, The Conjuring House really became known to me in 2013 when the movie The Conjuring came out. Like I mentioned in the intro, it was about the Perron family. Now, this, after the movie, kind of exploded in popularity. All the paranormal investigators wanted to go there. This drama came to my attention through a video I watched, Mr. John Wolf. He does sort of objective criticism of paranormal videos, both streaming and YouTube. So if you want to check them out, please do. I suggest I'll try to link them in the description box below. Mr. Wolf brought this drama to my attention. Now, this drama is kind of layered because he's done, when I watched it, he had done uh, previous videos on The Conjuring House about other situations. So I'm going to try to go through these layers very quickly. Basically, Corey and Jen Heinzen own The Conjuring House and they open it up to paranormal investigators for overnights, tours, and that sort of thing. I believe they had staff. I don't know exactly who the staff was. I have no idea. But there was a couple dramas here. First, there was the Sam and Colby video where they, I think they went there for a week surviving the, 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 the Conjuring House. Now, Sam and Colby is very popular. A lot of people watch them. I think they have probably a million subscribers, that sort of thing. They're not exactly my cup of tea, but I'm an old guy. So they probably are not gonna appeal to me because um, they just don't. They just, their their behavior um, is a little cringy for me. So they went and did a week at the Conjuring House and the staff that worked there was Satori and I think Cody was his name. I don't know his last name, but it's a couple. Now, Satori is the daughter of Jason Hawes. He'll come into the story here in a moment. So Sam Colby went in there and Cody and Satori did their little parlor trick. They made either Sam or Colby cry. I don't remember which one. Relayed some information supposedly from the ghost of one of his deceased relatives. Now, this is a parlor trick. All right. Now, I if I went into this house and I watched a couple holding hands and I heard some knocking around the house, first thing I would think is they rigged the house somehow to make the knocks. I, I just I I wouldn't take much, I wouldn't take much faith in that these people can just basically contact my deceased aunt or grandmother and get relevant information um private information and then pass it on to me i would i would think there was something going on there i'd be a little skeptical so but anyway i guess he bought into the whole thing and he started crying he became emotional and that's what set off the first layer i think of this whole conjuring drama was the cody and satori parlor trick that they were doing they did it also for destination fear so that was one layer of it. And then I think when the new owner took over, now Corey and Jen sold the home over, they, they got they got a pretty good price for this house. And they sold it to a lady called Jacqueline Nunez, who's a self-confessed like spiritualist or medium. She has some spiritual ability. So she purchased the home. And I believe once she purchased the home, Cody and Story was still working there. The drama was still going on with Sam and Colby. So that was lingering in the background. So that was there. So they started getting, Cody and Story started getting called out for their parlor trick. Then I believe they wanted to lay off of it because they were getting some heavy criticism 
So I think the new owner came in and said, no, you got to keep doing your brawler trick because it's bringing in a lot of money. A lot of people want to see you do it. And then they were pretty skeptical because I think, like I said, I think it was a, it was a, I think it was a parlor trick. I do not think it's real ability. Now, I don't know. I could be, I could be absolutely wrong. And I apologize to Cody and Satori, but I wouldn't believe it. If I walked in and I signed a liability or waiver with personal information, and then possibly somebody could look up my background on the internet on a background check, which would cost $20. And then they could rig the home to do some sort of parlor trick to get some personal information and relay it to me. But they're talking to my dead uncle. Then, yes, that's possible. It is it is way more possible than Cody and Satori having the ability to reach beyond the veil of life and death and speak to my old dead uncle. Okay? So I'm just putting it that way. So, yes, for, for them to make this big deal over this parlor trick, to me, is ridiculous. Anyway, just say, okay, whatever. And then you move on because if they want to do that sort of parlor trick or entertainment, circuses and sideshows have been doing things like this. Psychic um, in the 20th century, they would do these sort of seances and parlor tricks all the time. That's where they got their name, parlor tricks, because people would come into your living room, what the English called parlors back in the day, and they would do this sort of thing and they called them parlor tricks. So if you want to buy into it and people want to be entertained by it or amazed by it, so be it. But don't take it, don't take it um, to heart like it's some sort of, I don't know, message from the grave. Because I just don't, I don't see it that way, and I don't, I don't understand anyone who would believe that. So then the new owner took over. I guess they wanted her. I guess she wanted Cody and Satori to continue doing this, this trick. They were under criticism, so they didn't want to do it. So then that was the first layer of the controversy with the Conjuring House. So I think Jason Hawes, who is, uh, you guys all should know who Jason Hawes is. He's the um, co-creator of Ghost Hunters. He's Roto-Rooter. Believe it or not, I saw him. Um, I'm going to run some video behind me. But I actually saw him on his YouTube channel when he was talking about this um, drama. And he actually said that he was still a Roto-Rooter plumber. That blows me away. After all these years, he's still working for Rotorua as a plumber. And I'm, I'm sure he probably makes um, a damn good living doing it. But I thought that was remarkable that he still works for Rotorua after having a show on on sci-fi or discovery or travel or wherever they are now. But I thought that was remarkable. So in comes a new owner, Jacqueline Nunez. And now she has Cody and Satori, uh, Corey, I think Jen was still working for them, who were the previous owners. And um, I think one of the conditions of the sale of the property was that Jacqueline Nunez was not supposed to live in the home because they felt that if they put that in the clause of the home, that um, they would protect the new owner from any negative influence of the home. Now, I don't know that I'm buying all that. I don't think a lot. I think some people are like, oh, the reason why all this happened is because she was possessed by the home. I'm not buying that either. And Jason also says that in his video that he's not buying that she's just this woman is just hard to get along with and she may be a little um unbalanced or she could be influenced by drugs and alcohol does it matter we'll never know but the bottom line is she took over the house and she soon thereafter was trying to force i believe according to what i'm reading she tried to have cody and story continue doing their parlor trick because she was popular probably very popular and they, they were taking a lot of flack for it, so they were kind of probably backing off of it. And then Jason Hawes came in, the dad of Satori. I, I hope I said that. But Jason Hawes is Satori's father. So Jason Hawes stepped in and said, whoa, 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 you guys leave my daughter alone. I'd do the same thing. I'd be very de defensive um, um, uh, for my daughter as well. And it was like, okay, just leave her alone. So I think that is where a lot of this new layer of conflict happened is they didn't want to do the parlor trick. And then the the, the new owner, Miss Nunez, was becoming a little bit more irritable and forceful. And it was just an unpleasant place to work. So then I think some of those employees were either fired or they just left. And then there was a fire in the barn, supposedly where Cody and Story had some of their things stored. And they were like out some money for some property or whatever. They're never going to recover that. There'll be a, they will, it will cost them more to go to court and litigate 
than it will for them just to replace it financially. So they may as well just write that off unless I'm wrong, dead wrong, and they've already recovered it. But I don't see them ever getting that money back because trying to get a personal owner to pay you back for property lost and you work in there probably is going to be pretty difficult, but they might. So then a couple of the tour guys, I guess the tour guides got let go or, or, or resigned. And Jen and Corey Heinz and what I understand also left. And then the last piece of this puzzle was Nunez, Jacqueline Nunez. And this came into the newspapers and local local news stations. It was actually a video. I'll show you guys. I'll run it behind me. But there was actually a news story where this guy, Brian Danzero, I believe his name was, was the supposed, I guess, um, manager of the property and the business, the business uh, manager supposedly he was terminated for stealing money from the home and the proof that miss nunez jacqueline nunez the new owner of the home used to justify the firing of this man was that she was told by the original uh, i guess owner or builder of the conjuring house which was arnold mr arnold his ghost told her that this guy brian danzero was stealing money out of the gift shop till so yeah that's a little that's a little wacko now again some of you may have already seen this on tiktok because it blew up all over tiktok but it, but i don't spend a lot of time on tiktok i don't know if i've said that or not but i do not spend a lot of time on tiktok i do see some videos of course like everyone else and i do watch some shorts on youtube and facebook but tiktok this story blew up so forgive me for being a little behind the eight ball but i just want to share this with you you guys should check this out go on reddit and look at some of the stories on reddit I'm going to make this video short today. I'm not going to get into a lot of um, super nuance. But just to summarize, Corey, Jen Heinzen sold the home um, to a new owner, Jacqueline Nunez from Boston, a real estate developer and um, self-described spiritualist. Then she had conflict with the staff that was presently working there and the previous owners. Everybody got fired. And then the business manager supposedly got accused of stealing because the ghost of the original owner of the home, the ghost, Arnold, Mr. Arnold, told the current owner that he was stealing from her. So that is um, um, a little wacky, if you don't, um, in my opinion. So there's a lot of stuff going out there. Jason Hall has made some YouTube videos, a couple YouTube videos, maybe three. I know he did a live stream and two YouTube videos explaining the situation. Because then he started getting nasty text messages from Miss Nunez, which is the current owner. And then Brian Danzero was getting dirty messages. And they've both been on Facebook. They've been on YouTube. You can look it up. You can go all over the place. I'm not going to go into a lot of that today. I'm going to run some stuff while I'm telling you guys the story behind me. But basically, he goes on Facebook. Danzero goes on Facebook. And I think he did a GoFundMe. He wants to litigate. All sorts of things. Now... As far as Jason Hawes goes, the last piece of this story is is kind of mind blowing, but she accused Jason Hawes of an assassination attempt. There was a vehicle that showed up for a booked tour on the surveillance camera, and I think I'm gonna I'll run I'll, I'll try to run all this behind me as I'm talking. But there was there was a truck that showed up for a tour, and I guess she I guess the property is secure now. So anyway, the truck showed up. She tried to use it as evidence that it wasn't even Jason's truck, Jason, Jason Hawes, as evidence that he went over to the house to try to assassinate her. So he's alleging that she's probably influenced by alcohol or drugs or maybe just loopy. I don't know. But that was the last that I, that I really got interested with it. And I'm kind of just waiting to see how the litigation um, goes whether they recover any of their wages their property or whatever now the cody and satori story with the parlor trick i don't know where that's going to end i know jason hawes put out a video where you know everybody's come up with a sort of all sort of speculation about what they're doing to make these knocks and bumps in the house and a lot of people have come to the conclusion that it's cody you know clicking his bones or his joints and his ankle i'm not buying that i don't know how they're doing it i don't care but it doesn't sound like a clicking of a bone to me when I've heard it. So that's still ongoing as well. People are still scrutinizing. And now I think Satori and Cody are saying, oh, we're going to we're gonna um, challenge this and we're going to 
prove where it's not fake, blah, blah, blah. I hope they do. If it is real, I hope they prove it. I hope it. Um, they sort it all out and they and their reputations are not damaged. But again, if I go into a supposedly haunted location and I see somebody doing a parlor trick, I'll be like, yeah, that's cool. That's great. Um, but I'm not going to get all worked up if they say or do something that seems um, private. Like they like they talk to a, 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 one of my deceased members and learn something they shouldn't know. Because the internet is just too powerful of a tool if you know how to use it to find personal information on people and then use that in your favor. So, and then I think, I think that's about it for the, what the last that I knew of the drama. Now this is all over Reddit. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to mention it's all over Reddit, all over TikTok. So if you want to see different variations, there are different, uh, minor variations of the story. Some say that Nunez was blackmailing the staff. Some people just say that she was just hard to work for. And then, but the part about her saying that the ghost of Arnold, Mr. Arnold, the builder of the home, Conjuring House, did tell her that Brian uh, Danzero was stealing, which again is just loopy as hell. So anyway, it's very interesting. So I'm going to finish the video. I'm going to end it here. And again, I will, I've been, I'm going to run some stuff behind me. I'm running some stuff behind me as I talk. And, but you can go on YouTube and probably find a lot of this information. YouTube, you can go on a Google search and find news articles about this, where the local news stations have done plenty of stories about this. You can look up Brian Danzero. It's very, um, it's kind of an odd name to spell, but it's Danzero, Brian Danzero, or just look up Conjuring House employees. And you go on Facebook, you can, and then you can look up Jason Haas. He has a YouTube channel as well as the stuff he does on, on, uh, on discovery or science fiction or whatever like i said whatever he's on so you can also look at his video it's very long i think it's like 40 minutes i watched most of it so but as it stands right now nunez still owns the house she's still saying that she believes that the spirits are correct and danzero stole the money and the jason halls is after her and that um all the people that work there are now gone so now i'm going to leave the video with this i've watched I've watched numerous investigations of the Conjuring House. I've never seen any relevant evidence that the house was had any demons or ghosts in it. I saw my what might be slight evidence that might be maybe a chair moving or a door opening. But you guys all know these old farmhouses that were in the built in the 1700s. I think it was built maybe 1800s, 1790, somewhere around that. Anyway, doesn't matter. We all know these houses or not level um, the foundations um, fluctuate the elevation changes under the home they have to level them balance them all the time so doors will open on their own when they're unlatched they'll swing um, it's just people walking about the house in a tour and you see something like a chair moving I'm not putting a lot of um, I'm not putting a lot of weight on that because it's just too easy for these things to occur when a lot of people are, are milling around the house so but i've never seen any real evidence so i don't know if the house is haunted or not the movie was fantastic um i know that any good investigator can make things seem creepy when they go into a home but i've never seen any real evidence that this place had any demons or infestation or anything like that i will say the ghost file guys uh shane and ryan went in there great episode pretty cool honestly they were up to a lot of shenanigans like they always are and they, I think, caught more evidence in that home than anybody I've ever seen. It was, it was pretty, it was a pretty good episode. Check it out, Ghost Files. Ryan and Shane, they go in to the Conjuring House. It's they got this one part in it that's really creepy. So check it out. All right, Hunters, have a great day. Thank you very much for sticking with me, listening to my video. The weather's going to be changing very soon. I'm very excited. And the latter September and October months, the weather cures up a little bit. I can get back to doing. I'm investigating. If there's anyone here that wants to tell, tell me they're here. All you have to do is talk into this box. And I can hear you. If you got something to say, he's a legend. So I'm looking forward to bringing you. I got some locations that I that I really. The code is tearing my chair to pieces. But I got some locations 
that I really want to go see that I've been investigating. They they are local. When I say local, they're in Florida. But they're very creepy, very cool, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So, all right, Haunters, have a beautiful day, and be good to each other, take care of each other, and we will see you on the next one.